Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to Chaos TV's live coverage of the EUS Challenger Series number 15, day one of three. And it's going to be Meet Your Makers facing up against TCM Gaming. I met this and I'm delighted to be joined by Riot's own Jat. How's it going, man? Dude, it's going really well. This is the first EUS Challenger Series I've gotten a cast here. You guys are on number 15 right now. And I mean, I haven't seen MYM in a while. They're going to be trying to make it back into the LCS. And then TCM is also already pretty much qualified for part of the promotion tournament, so this is a preview, really, of two teams that are going to try to make it into the European LCS. That is very true. Both of these teams have had uh, somewhat of a hot streak recently as well. TCM getting their top laner back again, JWoww. There was a couple of replacements and substitutes in the meantime with Koi stepping in and filling those shoes. So with JWoww back in the TCM lineup, I think it's going to be pretty good overall. He is regarded as one of their star players. But we do have the bands coming out thick and fast. Jarvan the fourth, Shivana, Fiddlesticks, Renekton, Cassidy, and finally the Ari. Anything standing out for you there, Jack? Yeah, not particularly. The interesting thing is the substitute for MYM, how we were checking his profile earlier, uh, Febivan, and he is like a Riven main in mid lane. The fact that that wasn't banned out at all by TCM either tells me they're not scared of it at all, or they just haven't necessarily scouted him. Because we know from watching MYM all throughout last year and really throughout time, they run the teleport mid laner, and they've played over a thousand games with the same mid laner in their roster. That's that's not there today. So the fact that it's not getting banned out and also the fact that he's there means there's a lot different for them. Yes, and that first pick is going to be Caitlyn for Meet Your Makers, which is a fairly standard pick for them. Makata is known for, sorry, Mackler is known for his AD carry play of Caitlyn. And also on top of that, Matroko's main is Caitlyn as well. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of picking that away from him. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. One interesting thing I'm really wondering if Matroko will go with later We've been seeing a lot of it over in the NA Challenger scene, is the Lucian pick against Caitlyn, because it generally has a very strong or even lane matchup against Caitlyn. I just wonder if uh, Matraco has been playing it that much. Yes, that is definitely one that we're going to find out. He also does main characters like Varus, so I'm mm -hmm. interested to see if you'll pick up and you'll go back to one of those comfort lock-ins. Regardless, though, it's going to be Elise and also Zyra taking up for TCM. I'm going to go ahead and assume, based on Belgian Beast not necessarily being the most known Zyra player, it's probably going to be support. Yeah, I'd absolutely agree with that. We've been seeing a lot of support Zyra. It also uh, preemptively denied a Zyra Caitlyn lane which as far as auto attack harass is pretty much one of the most annoying lanes to play against. Uh, obviously, MOM answered with Annie, so they're going to go with a bit more of a stun lock combo. Vi plus Annie is incredibly potent ganks in the bottom lane pretty much whenever they want. And I just have to comment real quick, these picks and bans are going really fast. They are, definitely. And that's that's normally uh, what happens in the US Challenger Series. Te teams just like to pick what they're comfortable with. This is why it doesn't surprise me a great deal that Matroko is going to be potentially locking in the Varus. Purely on the basis, it's just one of his go-to champions, Caitlyn and Varus. Also, quick disclaimer, guys, we know we're slightly behind, but we're both unfortunately casting from the stream until we get into the actual match, because both spectator slots are full. Regardless, though, meet your makers, opting for their fourth and fifth pick here, Jack. Yeah, and I want to see this Riven locked in. They've already, this is nice, because they've already balanced out their damage from the team by going Rumble in the top lane, and they're just letting Febivan play what he's got 400 rank games on in this Season 3 as a challenger mid lane player. We saw Faker kind of bringing out the mid lane Riven at Worlds, but Febivan has been doing it a lot longer. If he's accumulated 400 ranked wins in mid lane Riven, he's been doing it before anyone saw Faker do it. Yes, or indeed before Bjergsen, who's taken mm -hmm. the NA scene by storm with some of his TSM plays. But as you say completely correctly, Riven is his main champion. Kubon is known for his awesome rumble play as well. So they have a nice mix here of both AP and AD damage. Plus, as you said, that stun lock combo of Annie Vi. I'm really interested to see how this one plays off. Yeah, and I'm just seeing how TCM's going to try to round out the rest of their team. Against Riven, at least, it's incredibly difficult to gank. Gragas is a pretty safe pick because he can keep his distance. Really, the reason Riven mid lane is so strong is his early trading, especially with people who are short range and trying to farm, is just awesome. Picking Gragas would have been a bad idea because he wouldn't have been able to farm early, which is why I think they eventually decided there to go with the Lissandra in the mid lane. And TCM's composition looks rather scary. I'm really happy to see a Volibear coming in there, but they're extremely all in overall. 
Yeah, and it's also one of those kind of comps as well, Jack, that's going to keep meter makers on their toes because you've got a few fairly versatile champions. Elise could possibly mm. be played in jungle or top. We've even seen her played in mid before. Uh, Belgian Beast, Lissandra, obviously they're not going to know it's Belgian Beast, Lissandra just yet, can be played top as well. So it's it's quite interesting for meter makers going into this game, not knowing entirely what they're up against and where. Yeah, and especially because TCM Gaming doesn't generally run teams with multiple tanks. They run very high damaging uh, champions in the top lane for JWoww. Elise can go a little bit tanky, but I'm not expecting it. You know, I'm expecting the glass cannon Elise, or at least a little bit of quick magic pen to try to burst people down. You know, I think this is going to be a really exciting game. I know we were watching the end of the last one between Millennium and the new Avalanche team, and they were fighting all the time. I'm kind of expecting that again this time, because as far as initiation and almost short range or go-in champions, both these teams are just loaded with them, so we're going to see some brawly fights. Definitely the case. Either way, ladies and gents, we are going to find out just how much action ensues after this short commercial break, about three minutes remaining on the delay. Our new rejoinders will be live for game number one out of a potential three between Meet Your Makers and TCM Gaming. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hello and good evening ladies and gents, welcome back to our live coverage of TCM versus Meet Your Makers. I'm at joined by Jat and we are already onto the rift. Looks like we could have some early action actually with Makata oh, no. running into the tri bush. This is not looking good for him. Going to be wrapped straight down with the snare. Makata somehow manages to survive for now and gets back to the sanctuary of his own team. But in doing so, was forced to burn that flash, Jat. That, that was a bit precarious. Yeah, we thought you know, in the picks and bans that we were going to see a little bit of brawling. I didn't expect to see it that early. Uh, Makate really just got ahead of his team there. That's a miscommunication. They weren't expecting TCM to be there early grouped up, but you have to expect that. You have to respect your opponent right there. There's no way Makate should have been up there that far by himself because if no one's there, he doesn't gain anything. And if there's three people there, he either dies or burns his flash. And we saw the flash burn. Yep, so that is going to be less presence coming out of those ganks as well from Makata for the next few minutes with Vi. So could prove to, to kind of stymie some of his early aggression as well, Jat. So it hurts in a, a number of different ways. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we know at least a Vi pick when you're going with, say, the Annie bottom lane, being able to stun lock someone while Vi is charging her Vault Breaker is an incredibly potent gank. It's even more potent because you can flash mid Vault Breaker to really get a 1200 range or so uh, full damage punch. He just can't do that anymore. And he's potentially vulnerable to Volley Bear dueling him if he gets caught out in the jungle. There's a lot of bad things that happen because he burned that flash. Yeah, and it's going to be so difficult to escape Volley Bear's claws as well with Rolling Thunder coming in. Really does need that flash. Regardless, though, interestingly enough, we have a lane switch up with the duo lane from TCM going up against Riven mid. How do you feel this is going to pay off for them, Jack? I'm really interested to see how this goes, and honestly, I haven't seen this matchup enough to make a, a smart decision. We've generally only seen Riven mid against Zed in competitive play, and in solo queue you almost never see the lane swaps, but here's that jungle fight we thought would happen. Makata's got no flash. He doesn't, and he's getting chased down by the bear right now with the red buff as well. Bite comes in. Not going to be enough damage, but here comes Kubon from the side. He's got that flame spitter working, but Naraterodot with Volley Bear, with that passive up, is kind of uh, deceptively strong, Jack. They don't want to be going in on this. And here's the benefit of running the 2v1 mid, not only because they're against a ribbon, but it allows the support roaming room to invade that blue buff. So they may have even decided to do the lane swap once they knew the flash was down on Vi, because it almost guaranteed that that invade would be successful. They would have the numbers advantage, and they knew that Vi would be gone. So a really smart tactical play there by TCM, getting the two-person min and having Zara help out. Yeah, preemptive play at its finest. And that is indeed will be the blue buff going onto Volley Bear Naraterador while Matroco and Barney D push down the mid. This will, however, leave Belgian Beast in a one versus two himself. Looks like they're gonna mm. go ahead and return the favor here, potentially going for that blue steal. Yeah, and this is all about whether Zyra can fade back in time or if Lissandra's willing to give up that creep wave, and it actually looks like they are. A 3v3 may be materializing here. It is a double buff Volley Bear, and we can see the fight. Yes, he's going to Rolling Thunder, Libic backwards, he's forced to flash away instantly, Maclis trying his best, but simply nowhere near enough damage. First Blood's going to go on Narrow Terror Door, going to be taking that blue, in fact, Makata comes in with the Smite Steel, will it be at the cost of his own life though? Vault Breaking away, remember that flash is still down, here comes the Ring of Frost, Makla running away, don't think he's going to be able to escape from this one versus three, although he does have his flash up and available, just about manages to survive by the skin of his teeth. Wow, Metas, that was a huge win for TCM. Sure, the blue buff got taken away by Makade, but then it just got given to Belgian Beast. So what's happened right now is we have double buffs on two people on TCM. All four buffs in the game are in their hands right now. They got the two kill advantage. They're already up 1,700 gold, and all that materialized in a long sense from when Makade burned his flash at level one because that set him behind from losing his own blue buff which made him want to catch up by invading the enemy blue and it just didn't work out. TCM, because they had the Zyra mid, could support both of the buff case fights and they just came out on top both times. It just goes to show again how much of a domino effect League of Legends is, Chat. As you say, just off that flash level one because of somewhat of a, an over-aggressive kind of mentality from Makata was mm. kind of just put them behind because of the fact that that instantly gave Naraterador the free license to play aggressive, to go for that blue steal. And in doing so, they almost forced a retaliation from Meet Your Makers and they're in the right place at the right time.
Absolutely, and now we have to see how Naruto Rador deals with this early lead he's gotten. He's gotten a kill and an assist, and instead of going for a Spirit Stone, he's gone Boots of Mobility on Volibear. So he's going to be looking to gank as much as possible. He's looking top lane into a ward, and Vi is still trying to catch up in mid lane. Here yes, comes Volley, though, top he's, lane. He's going to top lane alongside Jay Wow. Coupon's in a lot of trouble right now. He does have his flash and his ignite, however, but I'm not too sure that he's going to go for it with that second cocoon landing. And that should be all she wrote. In fact, they turn back, not allowing for the scrap shield to come in. Finally, do claim that kill, though. Yeah, interesting how Kuban decided to not even burn his flash. He must have just not been paying attention because that was a Vala Bear straight through a ward. I really have to question his positioning right there. Maybe they're just distracted. A lot of times when your jungler or your team is having a bad game, you press a little bit extra in your solo lanes. So Febaven and also Kuban are likely to be going a little bit too hard, and he just has to be able to catch that ward. Otherwise, Naruto Rodoro is just keep going to roll around on Volibear and crush. And potentially this could come also off the back of the fact that, as you said before, Thousand Days, the three of Charu, uh, Makata and Makla have been playing together, but with a new mid laner, maybe some of that communication and synergy is just not on the cards for them, and they're making slight missteps as a result. Yeah, and another thing with that is all the jungle invades early on with Febaven, Normally that's communication that your mid laner is talking about. Where Zara is coming, whether you can support, and whether the jungler expects him to be there. They're also used, MIM is used to having the teleport in the mid lane, so even if he wasn't immediately peeling for those jungle fights, he'd be able to teleport in. None of that happens with Febaven and also with Riven, because even though the in lane mobility of Riven is high, kind of the cross map ability or the jungle brawl fighting just isn't the same. Oh, Jay Mao is being heavily aggressed on from a danger zoned up Kubon who's already used that ignite. Here comes the flame spitter repelling away though. Is Jay Wow? Can he manage to survive? Oh. As that second electro harpoon will be missing. He's going deep right now, but at the cost of his own life. One for one trade. Yeah, he had to go a little bit extra on that. If he would have landed the first electro harpoon after Elise came down from the repel, he would have, you know, then had to fight Lissandra. But he wouldn't have given up the kill back to Elise, which will be a smaller, I don't know, negative thing for him in the straight up lane. He gets one kill back, but he's still losing that lane really badly. Yeah, pretty brutal at top. That being said, how is it looking for JWoww right now at the bot lane as he's moving down here? I should say Belgian Beast, apologies. Well, 52 yeah. CS, 1 and 0. Not looking too bad for him. Looks like they're going to go ahead and re-rotate, however, Belgian Beast going to mid or top. Yeah, that's... Oh, dear. So Barney D actually went down in the mid lane because Makate used his level 6 gank on that, and that's the punish. So that's MIM trying to come back into the mid lane using Febavent's mid lane ribbon, who also hasn't been denied that heavily in CS. Look at him go! Oh, Matroko gets absolutely crushed, saved by his barrier there as he ulted up Febavant, was looking for that kill. Here comes the bear, however, on Makata. Volley Bear is looking huge right now with that red buff, chasing afterwards with Rolling Thunder. Makata is going to be very vulnerable and will finally fall down. All right, well, he's dead because Naruto Rador is becoming a monster on Vala Bear. They're going to continue the blue buff steal cycle and try and get their experience and their buff control higher through this, but really, what's interesting about these 2v1 lanes is they're only being used for roaming. The CS is fine. Kubon has been aggressed on from Belgian Beast and Nara Terrador, who's trying his best to escape from this one. Equalizer comes down, it's going to be nowhere near enough to stymie off the aggression. It is going to be slowing down Nara Terrador, but he's got the red buff. He is Volibear after all, with Boots of Mobility, who's chasing down Rumble, finally will be falling to the hands of Belgian Beast. Yeah, Naruto Rador is having a blast this game. When you get Boots of Mobility that early on Volibear, you start this deadly cycle where no one has flashes because you just have to show up near them, they'll burn a flash. And it's so easy to cycle back and forth with that Volibear Q rolling thunder and just get them again and again. Additionally, Naruto Rador is maxing his Frenzy on Volibear, which is the killing thing to do. If he wanted to farm more in the jungle, he's more likely to max his E, but as far as being able to get to people, since he has his boots and mobility, the execute damage from that frenzy is absurd early on. And since he's not farming 28 CS, you can see devise 38. He's just about the killing right now, and it is working marvelous. Yeah, absolutely. A bot lane with Troco actually just whiffed his chains of corruption. They were looking for the tower mm -hmm. dive on Libic, while the AD of Makla was not there. 
alongside, but does miss, so that information could prove to be crucial. Riven was thinking about potentially going in for the invade. Not going to be happening, however. Uh, just going back onto what you were saying before about <laughs> uh, Naruterador maxing out the frenzy. Kind of a declaration of intent. He wants to go for ganks, he wants to go for kills. And that happened all off the back of him getting first blood. Yeah, and now we see a four-man mob squad down at the bottom lane. They know that Rumble's up in the top lane, and they feel like they're stronger 4v4. If there was a way, though, for MOM to come back in this game, it would be catching the right dragon fight where Febavan's Riven, since he's got that Brutalizer and a kill, could get some work done. But this is an extremely dangerous fight right now just because of how far Naruto Rador is. Yes, it would be if it engages right now, a 4 versus 3, because Varus is still in the mid lane, but seemingly both teams are just respecting one another, and they're just going to back on off. They don't want to make this big risk, big gamble. Just going to go back and farm some more creeps. Yeah, what's interesting about the AD carry matchup is the first pick, Caitlyn, by Mackler, hasn't really showed its effectiveness, because you either pick Caitlyn to shovel lane really quickly 2v1, or have a great duel 2v2, but neither of those things have happened because TCM's jungle control has been so strong. Nakata has caught himself a bear, but Everfen's trying his best to pull this one back, but the Chain of Corruption's still down for 30 seconds. I don't think they wanted to go too deep and uh, engage, and they will manage to back on off. But still, that's the Assault and Battery down from Vi. Yeah, and that makes a jungle fight more likely, knowing that Vi's initiation isn't there. But the fear from Riven could still be too high for them to go and do things. Another thing to keep in mind is TCM knows they have a pretty big advantage, knows that Volibear has a lot of roaming gank potential with his boots and mobility, but not necessarily the sustained fight potential, since he's really just about getting to people. Once he's there, he might not be the strongest fighter. Uh-oh, Equalizer comes down. We'll be slowing both j and Naraterador. Question is, are they going to jump on top of this? Are they actually fast enough? Does not look likely. So Equalizer, I thought, was going to set up a nice play. But that being said, with all the attention at top lane, Jat, Barney D and Matroco are going to use this opportunity to try and just harass the mid lane. Yeah, 12 minutes in, no turrets. Kuban going down again, though. Oh, he's going to be falling again to these ganks. The amount of pressure that TCM have been putting at top has been pretty brutal from him, honestly. 1-4 to four with 57 CS at this stage of the game, but here comes Febaven to the top lane as the Cocoon will be landing from Riven. Going to be looking for these kills. Could actually conceivably pick one or two of them up here, but beautiful duking away from JWoww, and also now Terodal will keep them in position. Teleport through from Belgian Beast. Can he catch up in time? Riven jumping over the wall. Flash from Belgian oh Beast and the Frozen Tomb. And that should be all she wrote. Riven, or will it? Yes, it will, finally. JWoww takes a kill. And it's actually TCM that uses the teleport mid laner to punish MYM right there. So a little bit of change of circumstance as far as MYM is concerned. It just means even more farm for TCM. It was close to getting the shutdown on Naruto Rador's Volibear. If I'm saying his name right, I think I am. But that's just from bad to worse for MYM. They spent all the time roaming up there. They burned almost everything they could and they still didn't get anything positive out of it. Yep, just the one objective falling thus far in the game, and that is first blood on objectives to meet your makers, who are fairly far behind, it has to be said, Jack, for 13 and a half minutes, 2 to 8, nearly a 3.2k gold disparity between themselves and TCM. So, that being said, they have got the first objective, maybe going to try and make some plays off the back of it, but TCM are just pushing right through mid. Yeah, they're just trying to get one of the turrets back. They're going to keep the gold as even as possible right now. I think the mid turret being down, as we always say, is more effective than having a side lane turret down because it gives you access or cleaner access to both the blue buff and the red buff. And that's just fantastic for TCM since they've already kind of staked their claim inside MYM's jungle, keeping Mikade down and not letting him get that blue buff. Even though they're walking through a ward here, you can see they're cycling for the third potential blue buff steal of the game right now with Lissandra and Volibear. Yep, they are constantly putting down pressure with this boots of Miss Mobility at Volibear just starting round. And Belgian Beast will be taking this one out. A couple pings on the map towards mid, but I don't think a great deal is going to happen. So we have got to that stage in the game, Jack, where TCM are pretty much just bossing round the jungle of Meet Your Makers. Yeah, and unless Meet Your Makers can kind of catch Volibear in an invade or in a roam, not much is going to be getting better. Oh, Frozen Tomb and Chain of Corruptions on top of Riven is going to be looking to try and get away from this one with the ultimate actually Whoa. evens it up. A one-to-one -one trade, beautiful damage and play 
from the mid laner of Febivan. So we are wondering, Jack, how would he fit into this team? Thus far, it's not been doing too bad at all. Yeah, and that's one of the big reasons that TCM didn't go for the dragon fight earlier, because a Riven at this point in the game is incredibly potent. It's another reason mid lane Riven has been seeing so much play, is because you just don't want to fight her that early in the game, and from the mid lane versus the top lane, it's much easier for the mid laner to get involved. But knowing now that they've killed the Riven means we might see the dragon fight, and I wouldn't be surprised if Makade tries to steal this one. It would be near suicidal. Oh, he's jumped in. He's not able to steal that one away. As he said, on near suicidal, forced to flash away. So even though they didn't pick up the kill, they're going to be in that same position as earlier, Jat, where Makata, without his flash, nowhere near as much of a threat on the board for TCM. Yeah, at least he finished his Spirit of the Ancient Golem, right? He's farmed a little bit. He's at 3,600 gold. But you just compare that across the board to Volibear, who's at 5,000 100 gold. It has been an absolute shellacking he's taken so far in the jungle, and it's not getting any better, especially when he's failing steals like that over the wall. Yeah, and speaking of shellacking here, a top lane Kubon, 1 to 4, 89 CS is pretty devastating for him. And JWoww has had a lot of jungle presence at top lane, so it's not a case of 1 versus 1 stomp here, but still, Kubon is not in a terrifying position from the objective of TCM. He's not going to be putting down that huge damage just yet in the game. And they're going to probably be looking for some team fights to exploit that weakness, Jack. Without having Kubon mm -hmm. in the right place with the right amounts of damage, they're going to come out on top. Yeah, one interesting thing about Rumble, and I know Ball said this a lot from Cloud9, he had a few games where he got completely destroyed as Rumble, like 0-5 in lane. But the base damage on his ultimate, especially once he hits level 11 for Equalizer, means he will always be able to participate if MOM can keep people in the Equalizer. So, especially with the way TCM might have a tendency to kind of ball on top of each other, MOM still has a chance to catch like a perfect storm of fights. If Libet could land a good Tibbers while Febavent jumps on top with his Riven AoE, and that's somehow on top of an Equalizer as well, that's pretty much what they need to win a team fight because you look at a 6,000 gold lead at 17 minutes, you don't usually see comebacks from that type of deficit. So MOM will need a very circumstantial fight to get back. Yeah, absolutely. So they're probably going to be looking, as you said, for the perfect Tibbers stunlock from both Libic and Makata coming in afterwards with the Assault and Battery. But what I would say is TCM have a, a pretty nice way of, of pushing back the Onslaught. They've got the Chain of Corruption, the Frozen Tomb, and Zyra on their side, who can just pop down the Strangle Thorns. So do you think it's the case, Jat, that maybe if Meet Your Makers go all in and go ham, TCM can actually just disengage and then re-engage when it suits them and potentially clean up the fight? Yeah, I think that's the danger. MOM is trying to balance right now and one of the big reasons they're getting pushed back so much is we say it all the time Zyra is one of the best counter engage champions in the game you dive in and you just get locked up for four seconds you add on top of that you'll get trapped in chain of corruption Volibear is going to chase down whoever he wants and we're going to see it right here but it's TCM going in Yes, they are. Belgian Beast will instantly evaporate Annie, who's eviscerated before the rest of the team's eyes. Here comes the Chain of Corruption, as Ribbon's doing so much damage, but it's so low in the meanwhile. Trying his best to survive this onslaught, not going to be happening. And a two-for-one trade comes about in TCM's favor, and they're healthy enough to start pushing down mid. In fact, Neroterador is going to be chasing after Kubon, flings him over his back, and that's Barney's deep with the Strangle Thorns. They are finally going to get this kill. Question now, are they going to try and push these mid towers down? I think they're going to have a clean run at it. They still have their AD carry up. There's no real push back right now. Maybe Mackler could try to clear a wave with a Caitlyn Q, but because Nerudorador is such a scary bear, he can't even get close to the turret. One really bad thing about that fight for MYM is they were pushed up in the mid lane even without a turret to fall back to. And just knowing the chase potential of Lissandra, Elise, and Volibear, it was too dangerous of a spot to be in, and that's why they got punished. Yeah, absolutely. No Sanctuary to go back to. And uh, kind of just chill out and <laughs> heal back up again. It was a long way back to home. So with that being said, you're starting to see why TCM progressed through the Tenerife Spring Promotionals and they are now in the running for that 2014 Season 4 Promotion Tournament. They have a seed after beating Copenhagen Wolves 2-1. And I think this game is an indicator to show just how big TCM and how much they've came in a very short amount of time, Jack. They are looking extremely good. Yeah, something they've done really great this game is they took the small advantages and turned them into big advantages in almost every opportunity. Even from the start of the game, they got Makade's flash down. 
maybe they had a pre-plan that they were going to go two-man mid with Zara and Varus. But because the flash was down on Vi, it made their initial invade stronger. They knew what MIM's response was going to be. They countered to that. Then they rushed Boots and Mobility. And they've really just used all these small things to make their lead substantially larger. And sure, Barnaby had to flash away from Annie there. Got a little bit scared. He didn't have backup, but everything else for them has been solid. Now that they know Libic has exposed himself, Nurudador is just playing around. Interestingly enough, that was both uh, supports flashing to, to basically make plays. Yeah. So Libic flashed in, and then instantly you had the flash coming out from Barney D, as you mentioned. So that is actually maybe going to work out better for TCM because they don't have that flash engaged to deal with. But here comes Libic. He has been caught out of position. Belgian Beast is going to pick that one up alongside Volibear. But in the meantime, while a lot of the action is now being turned back around onto TCM, a Troco fires in the chain of corruptions, but it's nowhere near fast enough to save his jungler of Volibear. 2 4 trade in meet or maker's favor this time. Still, this fight is not finished just yet. M Makata's jumping back in, flashes away onto the repel from Jay Wow. They could very well pick up this kill. Looks to be the case. Even up on a 2 for 2 trade. Yeah, that fight could have been a lot worse for MIM, but they did get nice shutdown kills on Nerudorador. That's the full 500 gold bounty, so 750 across the team. And the kills that were given back weren't for nearly as much gold. They're still on 8,000. They don't get any control back. But at least putting the fear of God into Volibear a little bit uh, will be good. It means they got his passive down. It means if they get another fight... Uh, no. Yeah, his, pa his passive is definitely down. It means if they get another fight, Volibear is a little bit easier to focus. And maybe if they do catch that miracle fight, it'll give them something back. But as we were saying... Things are looking rather grim. They are certainly looking grim, especially now that Dragon has just been picked up from TCM, courtesy of JWoww and his smite. So they are going to be uh, taking this one. Sorry, not JWoww smite. What am I talking about? Volibear smite coming down. Um, either way, though, I've got to say, Jack, four to two towers in favor of TCM. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult for meter makers. We've touched on this point a couple times already. Is there any conceivable way, though, that they can bring this back? You're talking before about the engage from the likes of Libic and Makata, mm -hmm. but even if they land those, I'm looking at the damage and I'm looking at the items from TCM. They're really brutal. Yeah. I mean, you can see that Wow has completed the magic penetration Elise. It's not really a tank build, but it's going to burst someone down almost immediately. You have the Bloodthirster Last Whisper build on Varus. All those things are there, whereas MOM just doesn't have their builds completed. It's at this point not even something MOM can do, but MOM just has to wait for an opportunity or for TCM to almost make a mistake. Because if TCM played standard here, if they ward around Baron and ward the approach to Baron, they can either take a free Baron or peel for a strong team fight. If they even get within sight range of MOM, they can get an initiation because Volibear is so fast, and we may see it right here. Yeah, they are looking for a potential gank, a potential uh, counter, I should say, but here comes the engage now from Makata, jumping back in as he was before, just caught out of position. He will be the first to fall in this fight. Volibear goes for a double kill. Could very well be getting the triple as well. Indeed, he will be, but not getting the quadra kill as uh, Elise will be picking up one up, but actually does get the quadra kill oh. at the end. My goodness, chat. 5-0 oh, trade for TCM, and if it wasn't bad enough before, it just got astronomically bad. Yeah, we're 23 minutes in here. This is pretty much the end of the game. It's an ace. They're just popping Zhonya's as they're pushing it. They can't even really end the game here. I think they're expecting a surrender almost because they have just obliterated MYM in that fight and also the entire game. It has been pretty one-way traffic. 24 minutes or thereabouts on the board. Massive discrepancy in kills. Massive discrepancy in gold on top of that. Surrender Vote has not came in just yet from Meet Your Makers, so they're going to make a go of this one. Remember, this is game number one out of a potential three in the first round of the E-West Challenger Series number 15. So even if they do lose this game, Jack, they can still claw their way back and progress through into the latter stages of this tournament. Yeah, and I mean, if a team knows how to claw their way back uh, from long tournaments or long outages, it, it kind of would be MIM. If we think about how long they've been around, I remember MIM was a team that made it to the finals of WCG in 2011. They were also extremely close to making it into the spring split of LCS. They lost to Dragonborns in a best of three right at the end. Then they almost lost to Dragonborns going into the summer split. Like, these guys... They can overcome adversity, so they're not looking good right now. Let's just kind of say that out there. They've been on a downward spiral ever since week three of the summer split. They actually had 
75% of their wins in the LCS in the first three weeks, uh, not counting the last six of the LCS. So they, they haven't been playing well. They did qualify for WCG 2011 or 2013, but they too won in the finals. Like this is not a team at the top of their game right now. And I can kind of see TCM seems a lot closer to the top of their game as they, like we've seen, 11,000 gold up, 25 minutes in, and we could see a replay of that last fight we just saw. Volibear, he's gonna go again. Oh, Chain of Corruptions as well on top of the Equalizer and Strangle Thorns. Livic is going to be falling down first from Lissandra. Again, a two kills without any retaliation, without any answering of the phone. In fact, turn that into a three for zero trade. TCM looking exceptionally strong right now. And they could just barrel down the mid or go for the Baron. The world is their oyster. In fact, it's going to be a surrender vote, Jack. Honestly, I cannot blame Meteor Makers for surrendering this game. Yeah, I guess they wanted to try that Baron fight one more time, but the result was just as bad. Belgian Beast came over the wall with that Lissandra ult, completely decimated them. But really, the story of this game for me was Narudorador's Volibear just dominating the map from the early game buff steals to the late game initiation on whoever he wanted. It just allowed for an easy, quick, and decisive victory in game one from TCM. And just to reinforce what you said, 10, 1, and 9 were Naraterador's final stats on Volibear. Got the first.